Hello, Crazy Crew. Thank you for joining me on another uh, speed paint here. And as you can see, I already got my outline drawn and I'm already getting started. Um, I do want to point out once again that my I am recording the audio after I've already drawn the picture. So if things don't quite line up, that's why. So just kind of getting into it once again. These speed paints are just kind of a way for me to express the thought process I had while drawing and just a way to talk to you guys. So we're just going to have kind of a chill time and talk about uh, and just kind of talk about the artistic process and stuff like that. If you guys ever want to uh, add to the conversation, like you want to chat about something in particular, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So right here I have a character concept um, and again, very anime style and this is basically my interpretation well it's a funny story basically think anime cowboy this is basically i was inspired by when i was watching the anime one piece now if you don't know one piece is an anime about pirates and it is an anime inspired by pirate lore and there are a lot of historical pieces in one piece for example the name one piece comes from a legendary treasure that a pirate hid in the Caribbean that a pirate hid his treasure somewhere in the Caribbean and to this day we still don't know where it is there is a lot of historical context in One Piece there are characters named after historical figures like Blackbeard and all sorts of other little tidbits so when I was thinking up character ideas I kind of wanted to come up with something similar and I think that if you look at Oda, the creator of One Piece's style, you can even kind of see some Western influences there. I've even seen some concept art of him drawing cowboys and such. So this really kind of came out of my attempt to kind of emulate that sort of style, but kind of put my own spin on it. And I figured since Oda um, basically did pirates, that I would do cowboys. And the sort of thing that led me onto this is kind of the idea of asking what would be the U.S.'s sort of equivalent of a One Piece. And I sort of thought about it and I sort of thought about um, folklore in the West and sort of cryptids and sort of monsters you would see. And I realized that if you sort of took all those elements and you sort of added some One Piece and animeisms to it, that you could come up with a pretty interesting series. So that's sort of been sort of a dream or dream com a dream situation I've always had, sort of to get this kind of scenario out of my head. For now, I'm not in, but yeah, that's sort of the basic concept. But specifically relating to this character right here, this would be my interpretation of Legendary Cowboy Pecos Bill. I have looked into sort of the folklore behind Pecos. Pecos was basically the quintessential cowboy. He was the roughest, the toughest cowboy that there ever was. But I wanted to take that idea and again sort of add some Western, some um, anime influences to it. So I sort of sat down and basically tried to make it more anime and I think that if you take the lore kind of if you take the lore kind of seriously you end up with a pretty interesting drama now Pecos is basically was basically a human kid that while along the I forget what it was called um the pilgrim trail the Oregon trail Pecos was a kid who was lost during the Oregon Trail due to when everybody was basically claiming the frontier in the U.S. And because he was lost, he was basically raised by, I think, coyotes and became basically a feral kid. Now, Pecos would eventually grow up and eventually reintroduce himself into human society and all that good stuff. And because he was raised by coyotes, he was one of the toughest human beings around. 
sort of the idea of the folklore. Now back in the now back in the western days they didn't really write down these stories. So a lot of these kind of tall ta- so a lot of these tall tales are just sort of off the cuff, the highly improvised sort of stuff. I don't think and to my knowledge, I don't think anybody specifically can claim these characters. I think they're just public domain just because they're so what's the word you ubiquitous so well known they're just so integral to sort of american lore itself so this is sort of my take on pecos a very young pecos and i gave him some more animalistic tendencies i sort of gave him semi whiskers i kind of give him i wanted to give him dangerous looking eyes but very expressive eyes as well I gave him a sharp smile with uh, fangs, of course. I think I want to give him some wolfish features to kind of show his more wolfish heritage. I gave him a typical sort of cowboy look. As you can see, it kind of cowboy identity. I'm not the greatest at designing costumes at the moment, but I'm learning. Um, You can see I gave him a piece there. He has a, a six piece right there. Now, according to the folklore, he's one of the be- he was one of the best shots in, well, the Great West. But I think I'm going to tone down that aspect of him in the anime just because I'm going to focus more on his lasso skills. Now, a lasso is basically, as you would imagine, a rope that you would use to specifically to wrangle... Um, your bison, your cows, basically your cattle. And that's what a cowboy actually was. Like, historically, a cowboy was just meant to kind of keep the cattle in line, make sure they don't get eaten by wolves and stuff like that. But along the way, the kind of mythology behind cowboys sort of became these heroes out on the frontier, fighting bandits, uh, saving small towns and stuff like that. So I wanted to kind of lean into that sort of idea. Now again, the lasso would also be pretty important. According to the folklore, his lasso was actually made of a living snake. And I think that that's going to be an important part to, to his lore in my series. The idea of using a living thing as your lasso is just, it's pretty funny and also kind of unnerving if you think about it. Not only are you being roped up, but you're being roped up by a snake. That's kind of unnerving. I've been thinking about sort of the kind of world that this would also inhabit too. In um, One Piece, it's a very fantastical world and... There are some slight, there are some slight modernisms, like the clothes they dress is kind of contemporary, but the actual world building of World Peace is very different than our own world. It's much more fantastical. Technologically wise, they're roughly around the steam age, the industrial revolution, so they have steam, they have just discovered cannons and steam sort of technology. But there is a mix of sort of sci-fi and high fantasy in One Piece 2. So I want my series to reflect that. So at any one moment, you might find that in my world, there's various odds and ends of steampunk technology. And they could help. They could run into... I wanted to sort of... I'm not going to be very strict on the sort of historical accuracy so the dates of events might not line up a hundred percent but i do want to throw in some historical elements in there just to get people interested in this sort of time period so i would kind of introduce characters that are not to um, characters in real life for example maybe teddy roosevelt will show up in one um other greater than life fiction fictional characters like uh maybe davy crockett might show up in the series 
And basically how I would interpret them is with a mix of anime-esque style and kind of what the folklore says. And maybe add my own little twist on it. So yeah. But that's the sort of basic world building and the basic idea. But on to Pecos. So for Pecos, I think that for his main personality, I would kind of... I will deviate a little bit from the folklore. So he's not going to be out and out a perfect cowboy starting off. He would be more... He's He would start off more or less unaware of how the human world works. After he leaves his um, coyote slash wolf brethren, he would be... He wouldn't really know how to interact in human society. For example, just learning how to talk English would be would take him at least a couple months. And that's him fully dedicating his time to understanding it. I would also want to integrate sort of a kind of idea of identity for conflict. Whether or not he feels more like a wolf or if he feels more like a human. And I sort of, sort of would want to play with that idea. Are you... Sort of the idea of, are you who raised you, or are you who you were born as? And I would want that to play sort of a key idea in his uh, sort of storyline. Yeah, he would have various... Now, Pecos in my series would have various wolfish tendencies. For example, he can eat meat without it being cooked. Much to the dismay of everyone around him, who usually kind of gags a little bit at the idea and he would have other wolfish tendencies for example you might see him scruff his ears with his foot he might walk on all force in the beginning of the series quite a bit he wouldn't really have a sense of personal space either and he might walk up and kind of give you a little sniff (laughs) and this would be mostly played for comedy as the series goes on he would learn more how to be human Although there would, although there would always be certain things that he would never understand about human life. Um, let me think. <clears throat> Another thing would be that, according to the folklore, he was actually found by one of his brothers. So I found that to be interesting. So what I would do is I would make Pecos sort of driven to find his human family. I would make him have this burning desire to try and find his place in the world, and at first he would think that the most obvious thing to do would be to find his family. Now, in the folklore, Pecos has a really, really big family, like 12 or so brothers and sisters. So I think I would hark on that. And maybe one of the first kind of story arcs would be Pecos going around and trying to find his brothers and sisters. And trying to see, and trying to find out where they are. And I think a gag would be that each of his brothers and sisters is just as unruly and kind of, um, kind of unruly as he is, just in different ways. Kind of indicating that Pecos was always going to be a little bit of a brat. (laughs) Even if he wasn't raised by wolves. But yeah, I would want him to really want to find his kind of, his purpose in life. And I think that would be his main driving force. Now, during this time, I would also start to, as you are on this journey with Pecos, you would start to learn more about the world and sort of the politics about it. Again, it would be slightly based in the, I think, antebellum, antebellum, 19, the 1880s sort of era. So there would be, the Industrial Revolution would be just starting off. So would, there would be a bunch of new sort of technology for him to sort of come to grips with. The railroads were starting to be built across the country so i think that would also play a big part big steel corporations oil corporations would also play a part and i would also have him interact with 
the people of this world and sort of what their daily issues are. Pecos, being a simple boy, would just go about um, hitting anything and everything that caused somebody trouble because he's kind of simple-minded at this time. In terms of personality, he would be very much like Luffy. He's very simple-minded. Although, don't take him for being stupid. He doesn't understand human society, but he was raised among wolves, so he actually would have a rather strategic mind. You have to be kind of strategic when you're taking down something that's much bigger than yourself, after all. So I think I would also highlight that, while Pecos doesn't understand human society, he would be very methodical in a fight. So, for example, if he was fighting, let's say, a bear or something like that, Whereas another, whereas a normal human, number one, they would run away because they, they have an urge to live. But Pecos, having been raised by wolves and just having anime superpowers, would know how to approach fighting a, fighting a bear. And he would basically be, in terms of his abilities, basically think Wolverine. Well, basically, he would be a com- have a combination of abilities. Basically, anything you could imagine. Basically, I'm thinking he would have a combination of super smell, um, super strength, sort of maybe super hearing, kind of those things. So imagine Wolverine, in a way, except no adamantium bones. He would have access to sort of um, other anime abilities and he would get stronger and stronger and learn more about the world and his own abilities as time goes on. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, back to that uh, side piece he is strapping. You can see he's strapping some heat here. Yeah, at first I thought it was a pretty good design but I thought that with all his powers, adding giving him the ability to also be very good at firearms would be kind of overkill. And him being part wolf, I don't think he would like sort of the gadgets and tools of of human beings as much. So I don't think he would really use firearms as much. Now I think a gag could be that he's actually very good at using firearms. Um, and his eyesight would be very acute, so he would actually be very good at using firearms, but he just chooses not to. And he would much more prefer to use his lasso. Or, of course, I think I would give him sort of the ability, I would give him sort of retractable nails too, to really emphasize that animalistic urge he had have. And, of course, his fighting style would include biting, clawing, and just, like, just general nastiness. He would not be the kind of guy you would want to fight because he would fight dirty. He would bite at you, claw at you, anything he could do to get a win. Because to him, um, a win is a win. There's no such thing as honor or anything like that. It would just be a victory or not. Now, I think I would also include that he would be deeply insecure about his wolfisms as well. Even though he was raised by wolves, by virtue of him being a human, he always had to struggle to keep up with his wolf brethren and his wolf sisters, so he was always trying to improve himself. And eventually what I'll indicate is that in order to just survive, he had to go beyond... um, the limits of what human beings could do, which is why he gets a lot of the powers that he does and why his senses are so highly honed and why he is so strong. It would be because he's con by his life with the wolves. He was constantly put in life or death situations and his body was forced to adapt. Now, just because he is now, just because he has these physical, um, just because he is super strong or whatever doesn't mean he can't be beat. Somebody particularly smart or clever or just know more techniques than him 
can beat him pretty handedly. And his style was really unrefined. It's more a sense of his wildness that gives him an edge in combat. And I think that throughout the series, Pecos would kind of realize that he needs to sort of form, that it's not just enough to throw wild sl slashes and kicks and bites, that he, would after, that he would actually need to form a kind of fighting technique and style if he wanted to truly improve. And that would be him sort of understanding more about the human world. Another thing I would also indicate is that Pecos would always want to try and understand more and more about the human world. And one of his fascinations would be reading. He would constantly keep trying to... I think that that would be an interesting sort of quirk he would have. He would essentially be struggling to understand the human language and he would always have sort of this um, urge to keep learning as much as he could about it. Now in this world there would also be very a lot of different languages. It wouldn't just be one ubiquitous language. I hesitate to say that they are speaking English because it is a fantasy world. But for the reader, for all intents and purposes, they're speaking English, so I'll just keep it simple like that. Although he'll come into contact with other human beings that won't speak common or won't speak English, but he'll deal with that as it comes. Since he was raised in the wild, he is very adept at using his surroundings, and he's also a very adaptable person. So I think that when it comes to learning about other people in other uh, situations, he would actually be pretty uh, moldable and adaptable. Let me think. So we kind of covered the main gist of Pecos and sort of his abilities and such. So just to kind of reference, Pecos was... A kid that was lost while his family was traveling along the Oregon Trail and was raised by coyotes slash wolves and was raised and was raised to be like them. And so when he is eventually rediscovered by humans, he has a lot of wolfish tendencies. And he's on a quest to basically discover himself, although he doesn't say it outright. He's just kind of wanders the world more or less he doesn't really have any particular besides finding his family i don't really have any particular goals for him to go after in what in one piece they the characters in the show are after the the titular um one piece which is a treasure it's a grand MacGuffin that everybody in the one piece world wants I don't know if my world would have something like that. I'm trying to think of sort of a cowboy western equivalent. And I don't know, they all kind of sound a little cheesy. <laughs> but I don't know. I think if I do something like that, it would be as the series goes on, you would kind of find out more of the lore about this world and how it ended up the way it is and sort of the situations that people find themselves in so I would really kind of emphasize that um let me think kind of on the design of Pecos here I do kind of like the design I came up with for him not gonna lie um I think the only thing I probably need to regard is maybe the pants is a little off but overall I like sort of his whiskers right there I like his eyes I like his hairstyle even um scarves kind of flowing in the wind are always a fun for me so i love those kind of the gloves he has kind of the ripped t-shirt sort of look i also kind of dig going on here so i'm actually pretty proud of the design for pecos here um but of course i'm still learning still evolving still changing so pecos could change a little bit maybe i'll give him more wolfishisms Maybe I could make it so his hair looks like wolf ears or something like that. Maybe a gag could be his hair will twitch as if he was a wolf. 
like uh, his hair could look like wolf ears and then they could twitch when he's irritated or something like that. That could be funny. Um, I do want to mention uh, a couple things. Oh, yeah. His lasso. Now, I should mention... Well, is that a spoiler? Yeah, I guess that's a spoiler. So, yeah, basically the idea with Pecos and sort of this... The, this Western idea is that I would be taking these folklore elements and kind of making them anime. I would be taking these really bigger-than-life characters in these really impossible situations and kind of explaining and kind of explaining them in an anime way. <laughs> For example, I think one folklore guy hit somebody so hard it created the Grand Canyon. So when I think of that, I immediately think of like Saitama or Goku smashing somebody into a mountain or something like that. And to me, at least, I can very easily imagine like anime characters being similar to folklore heroes and stuff like that. Um, specifically in that style. But I do want the series to also have some heart and some like genuine moments. But I think that would come more from the drama of certain situations and the drama that characters would find themselves in. And sort of the causes that you would eventually see them take up as like the story progresses. The causes of uh, the people that are being harmed in this world. The causes of like fighting for truth, justice, and uh, their equivalent of the American way. Speaking of, I don't even though this is obviously a western it is not exactly the united states so i don't really have a name for this place it's just kind of generic kind of generically the frontier so i was thinking of calling the entire continent amerania and they would basically be following a sort of funhouse mirror of events that happened in reality but just taken to the extreme and very anime. In terms of influences, I would also say that Hayato Miyazaki would inspire me, especially with his world building. And Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, was a great influence on this series. So I would want to include this sort of sense that this world has been lived in for a very long time, and that the humans here have found ways of dealing with both the local inhabitants and each other and sort of I would also want to indicate that there has been several different um, variations of their society and very different groups of people have risen to power and um, basically came and went but and this at this moment in time they're sort of rebuilding their societies and everything now, Amerania would just be one continent. There would be, of course, since Amerania would be the U.S. proxy in this world, there would be other continents. But it would, I would have my series mainly focus on Amerania just because it would just give it more cohesiveness, I think. I think I would also make Amerania significantly bigger than its real-world counterpart just so there's more... Uh, just so there's more grandiosity I think to sort of everything if you make everything bigger everything will seem bigger I guess let me think um, so yeah at any given time there are all sorts of let's talk about the wildlife I guess I, again I would play it fast and loose and just kind of fun, whatever fun things are out there so for example Pecos might fight a giant a gigantic um a gigantic pig one day or like a hog one day and then fight like a rabid bear the next and then the very next day he might come across this new kind of technology called a gatling gun and he might have to find a way to deal with that on another day or perhaps he finds somebody with um, prosthetic armaments which would be kind of common in this world in terms of prosthetics, I'm sort of I would sort of be drawing on Full Metal Alchemist here, 
where prosthetics are a thing that people know how to do and it would be pretty fairly common not as intricate as the stuff we can do in real life but very intricate in terms of its day so you would have people walking around with basically synthetic robot arms um and yeah i would think that would also be an interesting sort of clash to sort of clash between nature and technology which would be a big theme in the story of course and pecos i think would be one of the characters of course that leans more toward nature and he would be really just confused about why humans constantly are messing with nature i think that would be a big um sort of sticking point with him he would never understand why humans are constantly trying to destroy nature and i think it would be one of his sort of um defining traits that he would protect the wild and stuff like that that isn't to say he doesn't understand humans though on the other hand he would he also has kind of a dominating personality type too so he would understand that the wild needs he would understand that wild creatures and that nature in general respect strength so he would constantly sort of paradoxically he would understand that humans their that their way of interacting with nature is in their is in their nature that to dominate nature is in their nature and he would sort of come to grips with that and I think it would also make that a point in the series. Now, of course, another ability that Pecos might have is the ability to talk with animals. Being raised by animals, I figure it only makes sense that you would be able to talk with them. So he would be very much sort of the connection to nature in the story. He would be one of those characters that are very connected to nature just by virtue of spending most of his time around it. And let me think. I but uh, once again, he wouldn't. He wouldn't, for example, trash a city if the city was polluting, or he wouldn't cause trouble for a small village if they were chopping down trees or something like that. It would be something. In order to kind of make Pecos angry, you would have to do something objectively cruel. So if you go out and hunt a creature and you didn't finish it off he would be kind of mad at he would be pretty ticked off at that he would be pretty ticked off if you cut down more trees than you needed but at the same time he would also be this kind of domineering character he would go out into nature and fight wild creatures just for fun just because he can and he would sort of have this respect for nature that most other characters wouldn't now he would partially see himself even though he would even though people would tell him he's human and even though he can be in human society he would probably feel more at home at nature at times and i would want to hint on that that he does feel that he isn't quite sure if he is human a lot of the time and a really easy way to get to pecos would probably be to sort of hint on that if you want to make Pecos really mad, call him something like a mutt. If you call him a mutt, you're here cruising for a bruising, my guy. Uh, let me think. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. The motif here I'm sort of going with is sort of orange. And I was kind of going with orange partially because I think it's a very deserty color. And a lot of the series would kind of take a place in this sort of when you think of a western you think of deserts and stuff so a lot of my world building would involve sort of these deserty landscapes and such and he would be and since he was abandoned on kind of like the their equivalent of the Oregon Trail and raised by coyotes he would have a very wild and almost deserty appearance as if his body sort of adapted to that change So I gave him, so his motif is kind of like orange and such. Let me see. 
so yeah um i think that there are all sorts of characters that you could find in this world of course you have cowboys they would be bounty hunters they would be sheriffs there would be all sorts of wild animals too maybe gigantic worms that live that live under the sands gigantic um scorpions would also be sort of prominent and then you would have um other kind of wild animals of course we would have kind of wolves coyotes foxes and other strange looking creatures that we would kind of discover as we keep going through the series and it would just sort of kind of be an adventure of the week sort of situation where you would come across this weird scenario it's like oh how Pecos is gonna get out of this one this time sort of scenario but I do want to include sort of a through line or an overlying plot. I think some of the best stories have an overlying plot. For example, stories like Avatar, The Last Airbender, Samurai Jack. I think that the part of what makes those series so good is because there is a destination in mind. When you watch an episode of Samurai Jack, you know that Jack's eventual goal is to beat Aku. When you watch Avatar The Last Airbender, you know that the eventual goal is to beat the Fire Lord. So for this, I wouldn't make the goal as obvious, at least not at first. <clears throat> I think, again, once again, I would sort of play to what Oda is doing in One Piece, where there would be sort of this general idea, this kind of goal that everyone ha in this world has in mind, and I think I would call it the Manifest Destiny. And this was the idea in real life that, now in real life, this was the idea that people had, that people in the U.S. had the right to go out and make the wild their own or to sort of claim the wild as their own. Now, it has some ideas that can be a little troubling in today's world, but in this sort of fantasy anime setting, I would sort of make it this idea that everybody has the right to find their own happiness or find their own destiny. And I think that would be kind of the through line I would take away. I would kind of impart to these characters. Everybody would be kind of looking for their purpose in life. Pecos especially. Oh, look nearly the end of the video and I've just been rambling for a while and oh look at that I managed to cut some time I was improving on my drawing a bit so I did manage to shave off a couple minutes off it instead of it being a full hour it's roughly half an hour hopefully I can keep these speed paints to be roughly around half an hour but uh yeah thanks for listening to me ramble for about half an hour guys if you're interested in this idea and you you're interested in seeing more of it let me know if you have ideas about the world and how it can evolve and shape i'd love to hear it and i'll be seeing you later crazy crew and as always stay gold bye